Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, the previous blog was a tutorial on battery capacity. Now, I thought I'd follow that up just quickly with a very uh, quick little practical demonstration of how to measure battery capacity. Now, as I mentioned previously, there's two different ways to measure or specify battery capacity. Well, the first one is watt hours, and the second one is amp hours. Amp hours is a more simplistic figure, uh, as I explained in the previous blog. I won't go through it again, but the true capacity is measured in watt hours. Now, let's have a look at this. If we've got our uh, the voltage of our battery on the y-axis on this left-hand y-axis here, and the current on the right hand y axis and time discharge time on the x axis then as we've se as we saw last time the voltage of the cell is not constant it will drop or the voltage of the voltage pack depending on what you're actually measuring it doesn't have to be just one cell it could actually be multiple cells in series parallel or combination of both uh, etc but it will have a characteristic curve which may look something like that. Now, if you're measuring a simple amp hour capacity down here like this, uh, and you're using, you'd typically use just a constant current uh, discharge. So the current curve won't change over time. It'll just be completely flat like that at one continuous figure. But if you're trying to measure watt hours like this down here, then you have to monitor both the voltage and the current. And uh, you would do the watt hour one typically using a constant power source like that and well you, well, you don't have to but that's what you might typically uh, do because a constant power might be uh, to characterize say an ideal DC to DC converter or something like that so in that case your uh, you won't have constant current your current will change with the drop in of the cell voltage so as the cell voltage drops like this the current will increase like that. As you'll see, to measure watt hours is a bit more complicated and requires a bit more gear than a simple amp hour measurement. For just to measure amp hour, all you need is a constant current, like this constant current load, which I used in the previous blog. Very simple to build, quite trivial. And all you need is a stopwatch to time it and a multimeter hooked across the battery to determine the cutout voltage, which we'll call V cut. But watt hours, to measure that, uh, you need to log over time. You actually need a data logger, um, either a PC or a multimeter that can data log, and you've got to measure both the voltage and the current until the desired voltage cutout point. So here's what you need to measure watt hours or amp hours. For watt hours here, as you can see, it's quite complex. You've got your battery or your pack which you're actually measuring. You need a current shunt resistor like this to be able to measure the current. You can put it in the low side or the high side depending on which amp you've got, but you know, it typically might go on the low side. You've got your constant power load. Once again, that's got to be fairly intelligent. To get a constant power load isn't as simple as a constant current load, so take that into account. And then you need two differential amplifiers, which is very important, as we'll see in the practical demonstration, and then you need some way to log it. Uh, it can be, I've done it as a, as a PC into a data acquisition card, or you can do it with two data logging multimeters or something like that, but you need some way to accumulate all that data over time so that you can do your individual watt hour calculations over time and then accumulate them all up to get yourself a total watt hour figure. Now, that's, you know, it's fairly complex to do. You've got to have the gear to actually do uh, what hours. But amp hour measurement, it's simple. You've got your battery under test, a simple dumbass constant current load, which is a FET and an op amp and not much else really, and a multimeter and a stopwatch, and that's it. Um, and you just measure the, um, uh, you just set it up and just uh, count the time with the stopwatch until it gets from, the, uh, the voltage on the cell gets refreshed right down to your cutoff voltage. Simple. So anyone can do amp hour measurements. What else? Bit harder. As I mentioned in the previous blog, there's two ways to get your watt hour uh, capacity figure actually to actually log it. One is to get the, uh, the voltage and current curves. I've represented them V times I up here. So your power curve 
effectively and then do an integral of the area under that curve. But you've got to do integrals and well, you just don't have to because there's an easier way. One is to simply take the, um, the uh, regular measurements, say like it might be at one second intervals like that. And because the voltage isn't going to change a massive amount in one second usually, um, for most applications, then it's a very good estimate and you can calculate the watt second figure for that particular chunk and then you do it. I've expanded that because it might take hours to discharge, but if you accumulate and just add up all these watt uh, second measurements, you can get a total figure when you come to the end, a total figure in watt hours or, you know, watt seconds or whatever you want or joules, doesn't matter. So that's how we're going to do it in today's practical experiment. So what actually is the true watt hour capacity of a double A cell? Well, we can't get it from the data sheet, so let's measure it, shall we? Now, it just so happens I've got this brand spanking new MetroHit Energy Multimeter here, which actually allows me to measure uh, not only voltage and current at the same time, but it allows me to actually measure capacity in watt hours as well. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is discharge this cell at a known constant current using my constant current um, load here, which is sorry in a previous vlog, and I'm going to discharge a cell, a um, standard AA energizer alkaline, and see what we get. Now, as I mentioned before, there's two ways to actually measure the watt hour capacity of a battery. One is to get the characteristic curve and then integrate it uh, over time and do some math and actually integrate it. Or you can use log the voltage and the current directly on the cell over time and that will build up a watt hour figure for you. And that's exactly what the MetroHit Energy meter does. So let's give that a go. As you can see, it actually displays the cell voltage and it displays the cell current. There we go, 260 milliamps. It's actually 262.4 milliamps and it's drawing 0.291 watts. And then it actually, when you go into the energy measurement mode, you can actually reset the time here and it actually times how much, uh, how long you've actually been discharging, or in this case, discharging a battery, how long we've been measuring, and then it, it, you can see the accumulation there of the watt hour or the milliwatt hour figure. And by the time this battery gets flat, it'll actually get down to, um, a, it should get down to a watt hour figure, which we guesstimated is probably about two and a half watt hours for a standard Energizer AA cell. Now the MetroHit Energy uses what's called a three terminal measurement system. It's got a volts terminal, com and an amp, just like a normal multimeter. But because it can sample both at the same time, this is my little Dave CAD drawer in here, and you can see that we've actually inserted the current uh, measurement part of it into the negative terminal of the battery. We've got our constant current load here, which I'll set for 250 milliamps, and we've got the cell. Now, the disadvantage with this three terminal measurement is that this value here, because this internal voltmeter here, okay, is actually measuring the differential voltage between the two input terminals, like that, the ADC is there, then any current flowing through this wire down into here from the cell over to here, that is actually going to cause a voltage drop and upset the measurement. So that's a disadvantage of this three terminal measurement. So what we want is a big chunky wire as short as possible right here. Now as a practical measurement here, I've set this up and it's drawn about 260 milliamps as you can see, but the MetroHeat Energy is only measuring 1.0 037 volts. Now, if we get the fluke here and actually measure the voltage directly across the battery, like this, you'll find it's actually 1.200. So, what's going on? There's a discrepancy here. Now, if we actually move this voltage terminal from the end of the battery to the actual input jack, you'll see it's 1.056, which is basically the same as what it's showing here. So, that little tiny bit of wire there going, jumping from there over to there and the contact resistance of the spring terminal and all that sort of stuff is enough to cause that voltage drop at 250 milliamps. Now you notice if we turn the current right down, 1.259 volts and we'll measure the battery voltage. 
There we go, one point, it's practically spot on because there's no current causing a drop in that little tiny lead there. So we have to work on optimizing that. Now normally you would actually do this with what's called a four terminal measurement, which I've mentioned in another blog for resistance measurements, but in this case, you would actually measure the differential voltage straight across the cell into an amplifier like that and you take it off and then you'd measure the current into another amplifier and you would actually log the voltage and current using a PC or a data acquisition card or something like that. But in this case, we've only got the three terminal resistance measurement on the MetraHit Extra. Now what I've actually done is I've squeezed the wire in there between the spring terminal and the battery just to avoid that actual spring terminal. Now, that, now let's see if that makes a difference. Take it up to 250 where we were before and 1.25 volts. Now let's measure directly across the cell. We can actually measure here and here. one point two five three there we go pretty close so it was the spring terminal actually causing the problem with our measurement there now the actual cell I uh, plan on measuring is actually a Duracell Procell it's a standard alkaline just they rebadger them to stop pilfering <laughs> go figure um, it's exactly the same as a regular alkaline it's March uh, 2016 expiry so it's it's not brand spanking new but it is straight out of the uh, box it is original condition so it shouldn't have dropped too much capacity at all. Let's consider it brand new. And we're going to do 250 milliamps, which um, corresponds to the characteristic curve here. And we should get about nine hours uh, use out of it down to 0.8 volts. So it's um, late night here, so I'll head to bed. Now I'll set this up and I'll leave it running overnight and we'll accumulate the charge on here and see what we get. And here we go, it's 1.52 volts at 250 milliamps, a smidgen over, but let's not worry about that and let's start the uh, energy measurement. Here we go, it's reset and it's counting down. Well, it's counting up. So I'll come back in uh, eight or nine hours and we'll see, it's accumulated milliwatt hours already. Oh, look at it go. Look at the resolution on this thing. Oh. All right, it's morning time, and as you can see, seven hours and 53 minutes later, not quite eight hours, we've got 2.06 watt hours total. And as you can see, the current has dropped drastically to 37 milliamps, so it looks like it's completely dead. If we switch back, yep, the battery is only 144.6 millivolts at 36 milliamps. It's completely died, so there, it didn't even get close to meeting its uh, spec here of, let's take a look at it, it was supposed to at uh, uh, 250 milliamps there, it was supposed to get at least 9 hours down to 0 0.8 volts, we didn't even get 8, so it's dropped off completely before that, unbelievable. So let that be a lesson to you, you can't always trust batteries to meet their performance spec even when they're well within date, even when they're quality brands like this. So the answer is for a quality alkaline cell like this Duracell Pro Cell with, with four years left on its, shel on its stamped shelf life fresh out of the box has got just over two watt hours capacity at 250 milliamps continuous current discharge. So what did we get from that practical measurement? Well as it turns out I didn't get here quick enough and it had already gone past the 0.8 volts cutoff voltage that I wanted. So I'm going to round it down to say, uh, to roughly guess that it was at about, round about the 7.5 hour mark that it got down to 0.8 volts. So that, and we know the actual, the meter, because it's really cool, it can calculate watt hours for us. We know the actual watt hour figure of that battery, even below 0.8 volts, but it drops off sharply, is around 2.06 watt hours and we can calculate the milliamp hour figure as well because that's trivial because we were using a constant current load of 250 milliamps we uh, know it's well or we guessed it's 7.5 hours and that gives us a capacity of 1875 milliamp hours so what does that tell us well 
it actually doesn't tell us very much at all. And this is the crux with battery capacity measurements. We know accurately what the figure is for a 250 milliamp hour constant current load. But is your load for your product going to be 250 milliamps constant current? Probably not. So really, you can't use this data, this milliamp figure or this watt hour figure down here to calculate the capacity for your product. Um, you really have to measure the, uh, the capacity of the battery for exactly the type of load you're going to have on your circuit. So really, we can't say much at all what will happen. Um, well, we can because we know that anything above 250 milliamps constant current due to the IR, this capacity is going to drop. It's not going to go up, it's going to drop. But at lower capacity, say if at 100 milliamps constant current discharge, we could expect this figure to go up and the watt hour and the corresponding watt hour figure to go up as well. But how much it goes up by or how much it goes by down by, we don't know. We have to do further measurements. And here are two simple examples where constant current and constant power might be used and which one you might have to use to measure your battery capacity. Now, constant current, uh, you would might typically use that if your circuit here, if, if this resistor represents your circuit, and let's say your circuit is drawing roughly a constant average amount of power. It might be pulsing or something like that, but let's not complicate it, okay? It's drawing a constant amount of power because it has a constant voltage. It's being driven by a, something you should know, a 7805 voltage regulator, right? It generates a constant voltage over a constant resistance, which gives you a constant current load, okay? And a constant power load. And that's going to give you a fixed current into here. Now, because of the nature of linear voltage regulators, like the 7805 or the LM317 or something like that, this input current here is going to be the same as the output current. It's a little tiny little bit lost down here, but, you know, let's not include that. Input current equals output current. So it's effectively constant current being drawn from your battery. So that's an example of where you might use constant current. Constant power, on the other hand, requires something like a DC to DC converter. It's exactly the same load. This is your product down here. It's, once again, a fixed voltage. Let's say it's 5 volts or something powering your circuit, drawing, a, once again, a constant amount of a current and it's drawing exactly the same amount of power as it was up here but in this case because of the nature of DC to DC converters the input current will actually vary it'll vary as the input voltage drops so if when your battery voltage drops as it follows the characteristic discharge curve your input current is going to go up so as you can see you can't just measure the current because the current from the battery will not be constant it will vary so you have to actually log or measure both the battery voltage and the battery current to get power and that's what you want to do because it's a constant power in the load we're assuming an ideal dc to dc converter i won't go into details about how the efficiency of converters you know drops at both ends of the current scale but let's not go there if it's an ideal dc to dc converter which for the sake of many arguments you can say it is an ideal converter then you want to be measuring constant power. So that's why when you're measuring the capacity of the battery, you want to simulate a constant power load. So as you can see, battery capacity measurement and specification is not easy. It all depends on a whole bunch of factors. And so if anyone tells you, comes along and says, oh, this battery has a capacity of X, tell them they're, they don't know what they're talking about. Tell them to provide more information or say, that's assuming a constant current, or that's assuming a constant power, or something like that. What does it happen under pulse loads? What does it happen under this? What happens when the battery voltage drops? Etc. Etc. Ah, oh, far too complicated. Anyway, that's a simple battery capacity measurement. And in case you're wondering, it's Australia Day here in Sydney, January 26, and it's pretty darn hot in the here in the EEV blog lab, over 35 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. No idea, you Yanks. Figure out what 35 Celsius is. It's getting quite warm and I'm sweating. Time to go back into the air conditioning. See ya.